Welcome to Statistics in Excel video number 41. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook, Business 210, Chapter 3. If you're in the class, just go to our Chapter 3 website. Hey, we're talking about variability. In our last video, we did two videos ago, we did a visual portrayal, and then we did range and interquartile. Well, first off, uh, variability doesn't give us a numerical measure, and sometimes it's it's nice to have a numerical measure. Uh, range only uses two values, and extreme values can skew this to make it seem too large. And then interquartile range is only for the middle 50% of the data. So we really need a measure that'll deal with all the data points and give us a number. Well, standard deviation is the way we're going to do it. Now, we're going to also talk about variance. And actually, over here on this sheet, I have uh, some notes for each one of these methods and our formulas. They're also in our textbook. All right, I'm gonna, and I have notes over here, of course. I'm going to uh, see if I can make this a little bit bigger. That won't probably make it much bigger. I'm actually going to uh, hold Control and roll my mouse. That is a nice quick way to zoom in. So here we have our same wage data. Sample 1, sample 2. Now, uh, let's calculate the mean first, just for 1, because we'll have a another separate uh, data set down here for 2. I want to calculate our mean equals average. Mm, calculate there. Tab, and I want to count. Equals count. And I want to count the number of values. OK, now let's think about this. We need to come up with a measure that actually takes into account all the data points. Hey, I'm going to start off by putting all my data points right here. I'm going to say highlight that whole range. And in the active cell, I'm going to type an equal sign, click three cells to my left. And when I Control Enter, I populate all the cells with that formula. Now, how about this? If we think about 12 uh, minus 14, that would give us minus 2. That would mean that this is $2 below the mean. That's called a deviation. Let's just do that here. Equals this one minus the average. Right? That's a deviation. Minus 2. Actually, I don't like the way that's formatted for these negatives. Highlight, Control-1. That's um, currency. I'm actually going to go up to uh, Currency. And for negative, I'm going to select that one right there and click OK. All right, uh, so that's a called a deviation. And that's very important. Uh, and later, we'll see, uh, see how to uh, plot these deviations uh, when we do linear regression. But that deviation right there says this particular value is minus 2 below this. Let's do another one equals this one. 15 minus 1. Well, right away, we can see that's going to give us a 1. That means it's 1 above. We can do the rest of these right here. Actually, I can highlight all of them. And in this active cell right there, say equals 1 cell to my left minus, and I'm going to click on the mean, and then hit my F4 key to lock it. And then Control-Enter to populate all the cells. Now, there it is. There's all the deviations. Some of them are above. Some of them are below. But our goal here is to come up with a way to create a numerical measure that will calculate variability. Well, these are all the de deviations. Why don't we just average these? It's, it's A, using all the data points, and it's really clever. Averaging it is just like the mean, but instead of averaging the data points, we're averaging the deviations, they're called. So I'm going to come down here, and first I'm going to add them up. Alt equals, and then tab. <gasps> Oops. Oh, yeah. That's the deal. Every single time you add up all the deviations for any data set, it'll always equal 0. So uh, we can't use that method. Ah, but here's the trick. And this is uh, variation, how we're going to calculate variation and then standard deviation. The trick is, instead of doing uh, straight x minus x bar, we can take x minus x bar and square it. What does squaring do? It gets rid of the negative signs. 
So that's what we do. And that's the calculation. If you look up here at our formula, there's x sub i, which means a particular value, minus x bar. So every single deviation, this sum says add them all up, all of those deviations. But every single deviation, we're going to square. Well, the problem with that is when you square, these are units. These are dollars. Or later's, later, we'll have. Uh, you know, products made or hours or all sorts of different units. When you square a unit, you end up with unit squared. So it would be squared dollars or squared hour, hour squared. And we don't want that. So in order to calculate our average, we are going to take all our deviations, square them, and then we'll divide by the count. I'll tell you, hint at later why we subtract 1 for sample data. but. We'll do that calculation. This is the inside of this is like the average. It's taken an average for deviation. But because we squared it, then later at the end, we'll have to take the square root of it to get rid of the uh, uh, squared units. Let's come back down here and go ahead and do our calculation. I'm going to highlight all of the cells. And in the active cell, I'm going to say equals our deviation and shift 6 is caret and 2 control enter so there we have it we got oh look at that it got rid of all the negatives now we can add them up alt equals this right here is this part of the formula now Let's go ahead and uh, we counted five, but we have to subtract one. Now, why in the world do we? Ha oh, let's just do it first. Subtract one because our formula says we have to do it. Minus one, and I'm going to hit tab. Sample data divided by just the count underestimates. And it's because the extreme values are left out. When you take a sample, you don't always get the, you know, the extreme values. So a sample always tends uh, to underestimate. And so why do we subtract one? Well, because it works. And here's an example. Because if, it, if our um, measure for variability is always going to be a little bit too small, how do we make it bigger? Well, we subtract one, and, and that uh, works. Here's an example of what happens when we subtract 1. 10 divided by pi 5 equals 2, right? If we needed to get this a little bit bigger, we take 10 divided by 5 minus 1, we get 2.5. So the, the minus 1 in the denominator will, in fact, help us uh, make it a little bit bigger. Now, the exact uh, reason why this works is beyond the scope of this class. But so we subtracted 1. So our formula says take uh, the sum of all the deviations squared and uh, divide by count minus 1. So let's do that. Equals the sum of all the deviations squared divided by this count minus 1. Now this is called variation. Now, by the way, uh, we're mostly going to be dealing with sample data. For population data, you obviously don't have to to uh, subtract 1. And in the textbook and then over on this sheet, the formulas show you that you don't have to subtract 1. All right, so there's the variation. The variation is 10. Now, what we would really like is the standard deviation. So the standard deviation is just the square root of that, the variation. So equals, and I'm going to show you two ways to do this. Uh, in fact, the first way I'm going to show you is equals that and um, caret, and then in parentheses, 1 divided by 2. Now, in our a couple of videos ago, we did geometric mean, and we saw that to take a root of anything, we go ahead and uh, take 1 over whatever the, the count is here. So that's one way to get square root. Now, this is very handy to know when you're uh, doing Excel because we do have a square root function, but we don't have a tenth root and a ninth root function. So this method is more universal. All right, So there it is. There's our standard deviation. Now I'm actually going to insert a row here, right click, Insert. And I want to do the same exact thing here. Uh, but now I'm going to show you a, a, a different way. When you're actually doing square roots, why not just use the square root function? There's a square root function. So you can take this, close parentheses. So our standard deviation for that first data set is uh, 1, 3.162277, et cetera. Now our second data set down here, 
We'll go ahead and calculate our mean. I'm going to highlight this data right here. Tab equals count. And we'll get that same data. Tab. We'll do equals this one minus one. Now to get all of our data points, I'm going to highlight the whole range. And in the active cell, I'm going to say equals. Click up here on this data point and then control enter to populate all those values. Our X bar, our uh, deviations are going to be equals one cell to my left minus the mean. Hit the F4 key and then control enter. Ah, those are all, um, I'm going to control one and add some formatting currency and I'm going to say that one. Uh, we need to now square those, so equals one cell to my left, caret two, control enter to populate all the cells, add them all up, alt equals. The variation is equals the sum of the deviation squared divide by the count minus one. And finally, we're going to take our square, our standard deviation and use our square root of our variance and we get our measure for standard deviation. Ah, look at that, standard deviation for this set right here. So we have a 6.44, a 3.16. We have our numerical measure that can tell us which mean more fairly represents its data points. And definitely, just as with our visual uh, method, this mean more fairly represented as data points. Uh, we didn't come to any conclusions from uh, those other methods, but with this one we come to that conclusion. And that's what we'll be doing for a lot of the rest of the book is we'll, we'll have means from sample data and we'll use standard deviation in various ways, uh, all saying whether our mean is uh, representing our data points uh, fairly. So there it is. Uh, another way to think about it, are all the data points uh, more clustered around this one or more clustered around this one? This is smaller, so the data points are more clustered around this point. This is a sample standard deviation, and it's denoted as S, and it, it is the point estimator of the population standard deviation sigma there. And it is the best estimate we have because, as we'll see in later chapters, uh, doing calculations or gathering data for population is uh, most of the time just not possible. So our sample is the best uh, possibility we have. All right, so there's standard deviation uh, on some data points. Now let's click over on V4.1 and we want to look at a fast way to do standard deviation and variance. Now why do we do it the long way over here? Because Doing it this way reveals the math behind it, the fact that we're actually just averaging deviations, which makes kind of logical sense if we're trying to do a numerical measure, a typical value for variation. Ha! Huh. But do we have to do it this way? No, no. There's functions built in in Excel that will do all of these calculations. Now we have our same data set right here our wage data sample one, sample two. And I have the functions listed right here on a little note off to the side. Sample variance, sample standard deviation. Let's go ahead and highlight these two cells and in the active cell we'll use v, v equals VAR. Now notice this screen tip in 2007 estimates variance based on sample, right? So right in the screen tip, if you forget whether to use VAR or VAP for population, it'll tell you not only that, but it says it's an estimate, because remember, this is a point estimate for the population parameter tab. Sample one, I simply high click there, control shift down arrow. And remember, I can leave off the parentheses because it's a simple argument. I hold control and tap enter. That relative cell reference, of course, moves. Uh, and the reason why it does that, if the data is set up here and then directly to the right, if you're doing your calculation here and then the next one directly to the right, that means you set up your table correctly to enter formulas more efficiently. If you had sample one and then sample two listed below, you couldn't do that trick. You'd have to enter one here and then another one here. That's efficient setup.
Now let's do the same thing here, and the function is going to be called STDEV for standard deviation. STDEV. Actually, I want to go back here and look at this. Notice it says estimate standard deviation based on a sample. So sample data and estimate, because this is going to be a point estimator for the population parameter. So we highlight our numbers, control shift down arrow, and then I'm going to control enter. Oh, we got the same number here for sample one, the same number here for sample two, and we just did it that quickly. You betcha. All right, uh, population variance. Ah, I'm going to highlight both cells. Uh, I'm just going to assume for a second this is this is not the actual uh, population, so you would never use it. But just let me show you how to do it. Equals varp. That's it. And if you back up, notice it says with uh, authority calculates variance. That's because it's based on a population, so it's actually calculating it. There's no point estimator here. All right, so if this was, you'd simply highlight that and then control enter. Ah, notice we get a different answer because this a VAR here and this VARP, the difference is this didn't subtract one from the denominator, this one did. All right, and one last one. If you're doing population standard deviation, STDEV, and there's just a P on the end. Notice it says here, calculate standard deviation based on entire population. And I'm going to highlight, and then control enter. Notice we get a different answer here too, because it's, it's um, not subtracting one from the denominator. The calculation here would be sum of the deviations squared divided by n, which is the count, and then you take the square root. So that's how we get the difference. All right, so that, that was just to show you uh, this is not, uh, these are samples, sample data, so we'd never use those. Um, in Occasionally in the textbook, again, most of everything we're going to be doing is from samples, because that's how it is in the real world. You can't get population data most often. Uh, Imagine if we were doing political polls before we actually voted. Could we go out and get population data? We'd have to ask every single person. No way. All right, so that's just to show you that the P on the end is a slightly different function. All right, uh, next uh, we'll talk about coefficient of variation. See you next video.